Good afternoon. What we're going to talk about today are stub zones. One of the most common things that I get questions on whenever we run over DNS in a class, uh, on public forums, anywhere I'm talking to about basic Windows DNS is I always get questions on stub zones. What are they? What do they do for me? What can they do for me? And why do they exist? So hopefully this is going to clear some of that up and give you a good idea of what a stub zone can do for you and what their basic purpose in life is. In the most general terms, a uh, stub zone is just a pointer. It tells one DNS server where to go to find another DNS server that has the information that it's looking for. Now, stub zones are not the only type of pointer that you can create in DNS. You can also create delegated zones. You can create conditional forwarders to point one DNS server to another. But stub zones can do something other pointers can't do and that is that they can dynamically update themselves. Uh, whenever the location you're pointing to changes, whereas new DNS servers might be added to a zone or DNS servers are removed from a zone, a stub zone knows about that information periodically so it can add and remove the names and addresses of DNS servers that it can use to find information. Whereas delegated zones and conditional forwarders, which are still valid pointers, are all statically configured and statically updated. Anything that changes on the other side of the connection, new servers are added or servers are removed, you need to manually update that information. So subzones can be relatively helpful if you are looking for a pointer that can take care of itself after a period of time. So, now, stub zones were introduced in 2003 and carried over into 2008. So you need to be running at least 2003 DNS to be able to use these. And what we have here are a couple of 2008 DNS servers, specifically domain controllers, and I also have a 2003 DNS server uh, that's running as well and it's hosting some separate information. Now these are completely separate boxes, uh, completely separate information, so they can't resolve each other right now. And just to look at that, you can see the 2003 machine is running a zone called aerotech.local. The 2008 machines are running a zone called ai.local. And if I open up a command prompt on the 2008 machines and attempt to ping one of the aerotech.local computers, you'll see that it does in fact not resolve. So I want to allow the resolution then uh, from the 2008 machines to be able to find the aerotech.local zone that's being hosted on the 2003 box. So what we're going to do is go to the DNS console and create a new zone. Now a stub zone is a forward lookup zone, uh, meaning that it's resolving a name to an IP address. So when I create a new zone, the wizard pops up, hit next, we are creating a stub zone. At this point, I'm going to clear the option to store it in Active Directory. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. Hit Next. The name of the zone we're creating is aerotech.local. That's the name of the zone we're pointing to. Next thing it's going to ask is the name of the file to store the information in. Normally, you never have to change this. Uh, it just puts a DNS extension on the end of it. Hit Next. Now it wants to know the server that you're pointing to. Who has the aerotech.local information? The IP address of that server in my case is 10.0.0.1.2.1. So I put that in and it can find that information. Hit Next, hit Finish, and my zone is created. And it has some basic information inside it. And one of the differences you're going to see here is all that it has inside for aerotech.local now is just a name server address and a host record. That's it. Whereas the actual aerotech.local zone has quite a few more host records sitting inside it. But this being a pointer, I don't have those host records here. I don't need them. I'm, the whole point is I'm trying to forward these requests to another server, the one that actually does have them. So all I need to know is who the name servers are, and this gives me that information. Now one thing that you will need to make sure is set up uh, on the other end of the connection, in this case on the 2003 side, is the way that the stub zone receives this information, the uh, host records and name server records, is through a process known as a zone transfer. And this is commonly used between standard primary and secondary zones. And it sends the updated information, but in this case just name server and host records, to the stub zone. So we need to make sure that the aerotech.local zone allows zone transfers to my other box. In this case, I'm just going to make it easy on myself and say to any server. If you want to keep security, you can use the option here to specify the following list of servers and input the exact IP addresses. I'm just going to make it easy. This is a test environment. I'm going to say zone transfers are allowed to go to any server. Hit apply and OK. 
And now what I should be allowed to do, and this sometimes takes a second uh, when zone transfers are actually enabled, but we'll give it a shot here. Uh, first off, before we try, we'll do a quick IP config the flush DNS command. This is going to clear out uh, any DNS resolver cache to make sure I don't have any remnants in there. And we're going to try to ping again. And you can see now I actually have resolution. And the reason for that is the stub zone pointer is allowing my DNS server to find anything with aerotech.local by telling it to go to the arrow DNS server. Now, one thing you'll notice here to sort of give you an idea of how stub zones are dynamic. Let's go back to the aerotech.local zone. What we're going to do here is basically add a name server. So I'm going to go to the properties of the aerotech.local zone to the name servers tab, and I'm going to specify that there's a new name server. The name of this guy is going to be Aero DNS 2 And when I resolve it, there already is a host record for it, so it resolves back to an IP address. I hit OK, and a new name server is applied to the name servers tab, and a new name server record then is added to the aerotech.local zone. Now, when I head back over here to the stub zone that's pointing to aerotech.local, now you can wait for zone transfers to occur. By default, it's going to be every 15 minutes, but you can also force a zone transfer by selecting the option transfer from master. So we'll choose this option. This is going to take a little bit. This is unfortunately not something you see instantaneously. Uh, but once you choose the option transfer from master, hit a refresh, and that one actually popped up pretty quickly. So now what we see are both name server records with the host records that are uh, accordingly go along with them. So I can find the IP addresses and the name servers that point to the two different boxes for aerotech.local. So now my stub zone can use either of these DNS servers in aerotech.local to resolve that zone. So if one goes down, it just goes down the list until one actually responds. When name servers are removed, they'll automatically be removed from the stub zone. So like I said, this is a pointer, but it's a dynamically updated pointer, something that you don't need to keep too much of an eye on once you get it set up and running. Less you have to do in the long term is better. Now, one thing we mentioned a little earlier, and I sort of offloaded it for a second, was <clears throat> when you create the stub zone. Uh, one of the options you have the ability of doing is making it uh, Active Directory integrated. Now initially what we did is just create a standard zone. When you, if you wanted to, the benefit of making an Active Directory integrated zone is if you're using domain controllers as DNS servers, this zone will then automatically be replicated to all of the domain controllers in your domain or forest, whatever you have the replication scope set to. So just to take a look at that quickly, we can change this from a standard stub zone to a Active Directory integrated stub zone just by going to the properties of it and choose the option store the zone in Active Directory. We hit OK. Yes, we want it to be Active Directory integrated. Hit Apply. And you can see now it's currently an Active Directory integrated stub zone, so we hit OK again. This is going to take it a second. It's got to reload the information. But once that comes back, this is then going to be allowed to be replicated to the other domain controller in my area, in this case, this read-only domain controller. All right, so it took it a couple minutes, but now uh, the aerotech.local zones back up and running as an Active Directory integrated stub zone. There the properties, of course, popped up behind there. As an Active Directory integrated stub zone now, uh, with the same information I had before, it's just not storing it in a text file, it's actually being stored inside Active Directory. Now the default replication of an Active Directory integrated zone is to other domain controllers in the same domain. You can change that just like any Active Directory integrated zone by hitting the change option on replication. In this case, we're going to leave it uh, alone. We only have one domain with two domain controllers, so there's no reason to change it. So we're going to hit OK here, and uh, what I want to do is actually have it show up in the uh, RODC at this point. Replication has gone through, so I just do a quick refresh. Aerotech.local pops up, and once that information actually gets populated in here, replication is in the process of occurring. So it should pop up in just a couple uh, seconds, maybe a couple minutes. And now the RODC will have the exact same information as the standard domain controller, so either box can use this stub zone to resolve information.
All right, replication finally uh, went through 100%, and the information did pop up in the RODC. So we see the same information on the standard domain controller as we do on the read-only domain controller. And if we had more domain controllers, it would replicate out to them as well, uh, allowing clients in my domain to use any of these domain controllers to receive this information. Without using the Active Directory integrated option on stub zones, if I had multiple uh, DNS servers, I would need to create the stub zone on each DNS server manually, preferably by creating a script to get it done. Uh, but I would still need to do something on each physical server to get this completed. Whereas with Active Directory integrated, I create it once, allow replication to complete, and the information is automatically propagated to my other domain controllers that are running DNS automatically. So it works out pretty well. Uh, hopefully it's cleared up a little bit about stub zones, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.